the dirt nap. Six feet under. A piece of rest. The last bow, which is my personal favorite. And this, this is where I enjoy my final repose. They call it that too, don't they? Final repose. Oh, oh my manners, where are they? My name is Helen Von Feast. And I bet the big one quite some time ago. You know, I used to live a few blocks south and then east of Margaret Brown's lovely home here. But now, I'm stuck in a cold mausoleum with my vices. Who's bothering me? <laughs> Truly, it's my one vice. Well, it <laughs> it's my favorite vice now. Cigarettes, not so much a vice while I was still alive. Oh, truly, I was amazed that a gal could pick up a vice or two once she kicked the bucket, but I'm a gal who did. <laughs> this being one such vice, this another, I dare say. Mm. You know, life is all about vices, isn't it? But then again, so is death. <laughs> Atoning for vices, or wrangling up new ones. Mm. Perhaps, just perhaps, Death gives one the chance to discover what one's weirdness was about vices back in that day when we were alive. Hmm. The Catholic Church neatly classified the vices into the seven deadly sins. Oh, how deliciously dramatic, isn't it? The deadly sins. Oh, and there are seven of them. One of the things I loved most in life was acting. And the seven deadly sins demands the stage. It truly does. Lust, gluttony, greed, sloth, envy, wrath, and pride. If these sins were deadly, my father would have died seven deaths in all. My father, Frederick Bonfice, he was the owner and publisher of the Denver Post. I would become publisher after he died. Papa used to say that a dark night in Denver was much more important than any war in Europe. But the thing is, he was so much often a part of the dark fight. I believe he couldn't resist. Mother, she was a pious, devout Catholic with a capital D. Papa, eh, he was somewhat of a scoundrel with a capital S. He wasn't just a newspaper man. In fact, he made most of his money through the brothels and saloons that he owned in Denver. Papa used to brag that his houses of prostitution were premier, the best in town. Premier, the best. By all accounts, they probably really were. Bookers and hooligans, that was Papa. Rosary beads, Mercury masses, that was Mother. Mother prostituting herself prostrating herself in the house of God, <laughs> my father prostituting others in a house of ill repute. If he'd come across the uh, Ark of the Covenant, he would have used it as a home furnishing. I realized I had to do something for Papa. So, I pledged to the good Lord that I would build him a church in his honor. I would build the Church of the Holy Ghost right here in Denver if he would permit Papa entering into purgatory. I just wanted Papa to have a chance of a life without flames <laughs> and to deal with his vices. I don't want to talk about somebody go to hell. <laughs> Catherine Graham. <laughs> Everyone talks about Catherine Graham as if she was the first woman publisher of a major daily in the United States. The Washington Post. <laughs> the thing is, I was the first female publisher, <laughs> but she'll always be known for that. Outside of the Denver Post, I didn't have many close friends. I guess you could say my most consistent companions were of the four-legged variety, cats particularly. Oh, I so adored them. I made sure that I had good amounts of money every year to give to the Denver Dun Friendly and the Denver Zoo. In honor of my mother, 
I established the Bell Bonfils Memorial Blood Bank during the Second World War. Later, it became the largest supplier of blood west of the Mississippi. I eventually did marry. Now, marrying of homosexuals by women in the business, whether in theater or film, was a recurring theme in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. Miss Judy Garland had her homosexual. Various numbers of others had their homosexuals. And in time, I would marry my own homosexual, George Soames. <laughs> Thanks to Soames, I became one of the first Broadway producers that was a woman. I enjoyed my time as a Broadway producer, but my heart always in Denver. I performed as an actress at the Witch Theaters. And I started the Bell, well, Vaughn Feast Theater on East Colfax. It was a wonderful spot where locals could take their turn on the stage. Eventually, my entire estate would go to build and still fund what is known as the Denver Center for the Performing Arts. All of it. And that is definitely not what I wanted. You see, in those later years, I was not of capacity to make those decisions. And a man who would claim credit for creating Denver's performing arts complex would divert all of my funds toward that. I didn't mind some. All of it? It was drink that that was the funds back in 1956. Disease. Shortly before my, or I'm sorry, shortly before George started his descent, he hired a chauffeur for me while I was in New York City. A man by the name of Mike Davis. <laughs> I would soon learn that he loved to be called Tiger Mike of all things. <laughs> that is correct, Tiger Mike. <laughs> the boy. That was correct. I was 69. He was 28. Oh, I constantly did the math in my head. I even doodled it on pads in meetings, thinking that our differences in ages would change if I just did the math often enough, over and over, time and time again. Oh. My marriage to Tiger Mike was not a smashing success. Yes. As soon as we were married, he started an affair with Phyllis McGuire, the McGuire sisters. Phyllis <laughs> was also having an affair with Sam Giancana, the mobster. Sam Giancana was having an affair with a woman named Judith Exner. And at the same time, Judith Exner was sleeping with President Kennedy. <laughs> Let's see. Me, Tiger Mike, Phyllis McGuire, Sam Giancana, Judith Exner, JFK. Talk about a love fest. <laughs> I divorced Mike. Obtaining a decree in 1971, in December. I realized that after I had felt bitters physically, I would have realized that that was actually a really happy Christmas present. In time, I would have my own deathbed. Mine was on an instant death. It started in a somewhat ordinary evening in 1967. I suffered from diabetes for years, and I moved into the St. Joseph's Hospital, Beatrice in Miami, more as a resident than an actual patient. I did get out from time to time. When I went to the Pentacol Drugs on East Colfax Avenue for soda, <laughs> I died in 1972. You wonder, don't you? You wonder what I see here, who I see here, when I came here after I died. I was very fond of that Fitzgerald fellow, the writer. I so love the way that he talked about those lovely fiber parties on these days. And I talked about that Gatsby fellow. When I died, I was sure of the parties. 
lovely parties. Girls in satin gowns, boys in fine tuxedos, and there would be dancing, and there would be a boy that would come in, and we would take his arms and we would dance, and we would dance. <laughs> and the sun coming up and they, no, no, never mind. There's another one. There's only this. You know, I felt like I always lived my life in my father's shadow. Shadows are still here. <laughs> They're not Papa's shadows after all. They're my shadows. Perhaps I am here until I make my shadows go away. <laughs> 